I want to start my talk by telling you something about um, correlations in general. So when I talk about correlations, um, I mean, of course, electronic correlations. And um, yeah, the, in fact, the behavior of an electron strongly depends on the behavior of the others. And we are now in a system where electronic correlations are really strong, as we already heard. And this can then even lead to a spontaneous symmetry breaking in a ground state. And I would like to illustrate this to you. So here you can see an energetic scheme of a metal where the Fermi energy level lies within the metallic band. But then when we increase interactions in our system, um, and I will later show you why, um, how we do that, um, for example, we can decrease the kinetic energy, then different things can happen to the system. For example, the system can become mod insulating, where then one lattice site can only be occupied by one electron, or the electrons can start to rearrange themselves in uh, charge density waves, or when interaction is really strong, they can even rearrange themselves completely independent from the lattice in such an electronic lattice called a Wigner crystal. And all of this, all of these examples, will then lead to the formation of an energy gap. And so now, if the Fermi energy level is still at the same place, it will lie within this energy gap, and um, we will measure an insulating behavior, even though in a single particle picture, metallic behavior would be expected. And this insulating behavior we can measure, and it then corresponds to um, correla a correlated insulator. So these are all examples for correlated insulating phases, but of course, they are also correlated metallic ones. And um, we looked into these phases in Bernal Bilegraphy. So in principle, um, correlated phases were studied already a lot in other graphene systems. And I think the most famous one that we will hear about on Friday, I think, um, is, of course, magic angle twisted bilayer graphene, where you have two sheets of graphene twisted with an angle of around 1.1 degree. And um, in this system, the two Dirac points, um, Dirac cones, they will hybridize and these flat energy bands are formed. And in this system, several correlated phases have already been seen, such as superconductivity, but also correlated insulating phases like this mod insulating phase. However, we now have one um, disadvantage um, experimentally, um, which is that it's very hard to hit the right, right twist angle when fabricating these twisted bilayer graphene samples. And also there's usually a large twist angle inhomogeneity within these samples. And so it's experimentally challenging. And that's why we now ask the question if it's not also possible to observe similar correlated phases in the much simpler and naturally occurring an energetically stable type of bilayer graphene, which is exactly the null bilayer graphene um, that we were already introduced to and that we worked with um, experimentally. So um, it was already introduced. Let me um, just quickly recap. This is the lattice structure of bilayer graphene, where the um, in graphene in general, we have these two sub lattices. And in vanilla bilayer graphene, the atoms um, on the A sub lattice sit on top of the atoms. Um, in the B subplates in the, in the lower letters, and the um, B atoms in the B subletters in the upper letters, they sit in the center of the lower letters. Now, this subletters degree of freedom in momentum space, this um, gives rise to a twofold valley degree of freedom. So we have two inequivalent um, K points in um, each Boolean zone, and then we also have the spin degree of freedom. So overall, our system should be in principle 4-4 degenerate, um, which will be important later in this talk. Now, for transport, we are interested in what's happening near these K points. And if I would have shown you the band structure of bilayer graphene a few years ago, um, then I would have calculated it using these next nearest hopping parameters. And this gives you a parabolic band structure. However, we then um, realized when measuring very clean samples that the experimental data we got actually does not fit to this parabolic band structure. And so we looked back into the early theory of bilayer graphene, and we actually realized that when one includes more of these hopping parameters, one actually gets a band structure that is different from the parabolic one. And even at zero um, electric displacement field, we can see that there are four cones, from so-called mini Dirac cones emerging at very low energies. And I will not talk about the zero electric um, displacement field data further, um, but actually there will be a poster from a master's student that is joined between our group and the group of Leonid Levitov, and he will um, tell you more about this at his poster. What will be important for this talk is that the presence of trigonal warping and electron hole symmetry that leads to this formation of these four mini Dirac cones 
at zero dielectric displacement field, this will even persist when one applies um, a finite electric displacement field now. And then, as we already heard, um, we break inversion symmetry, we open up the band gap in banal bilayer graphene, and um, we still get this effect of the trigonal warping, which I would like to show you in more detail. So here you can see um, now in the valence band, um, a sketch of the um, Fermi surface topology very close to the band edge. And we can see that close to the band edge, the Fermi um, surface consists of these three disconnected pockets. But when one goes further down, these three pockets connect and an inner electron-like pocket pops up at hole doping. And when one goes down even further, we have a fully connected Fermi surface. So what we have here is um, uh, relatively sharp transitions in the Fermi surface topology called Lipschitz transitions. And these Lipschitz transitions, they come along with van Hoff singularities and the density of states. So our density of states peaks right here where this um, annular Fermi surface pops up. And whenever we have a peak in the density of states, we now might also expect interaction effects similar to the interaction effects that we get when we have a flat energy band, even though we here not really have a flat energy band. So now you might understand um, the title of my talk a bit, and I can give you the outline of the rest of the talk. So in the following, I will um, talk a bit about sample fabrication and about our transport measurements. And then I will tell you something about the correlated phases that we see first for hole doping corresponding to the valence band of bilayer graphene, and then also for electron doping corresponding to the conduction band. But let me for now start with sample fabrication. So in order to resolve this very low energies close to the band edge and to really go into these regimes where we expect the peaks in the density of states, we need to have very high quality samples. And so we do what a lot of people do um, in the graphene community. We encapsulate the banal bilayer graphene into sheets of hexagonal bond nitride, which is just another 2D material um, that is insulating, but has a very similar lattice structure than uh, graphene. And this now offers a flat surface to the bilayer graphene. It offers stability and um, it protects the bilayer graphene from outer influences. And then we also use graphite top and bottom gates that we will later use for electrostatic tunability. And then we also use graphite contacts sticking um, into the citrus structure that allow for electrical contact to the burner bilayer graphene itself. And these citrus structures, um, we do by first exfoliating all the single flakes. And um, we do that using simple scotch tape. And I just want to highlight again that this Bernal stacking configuration we automatically get from nature. So we directly can exfoliate using the scotch tape, these bilayer graphene flakes, and we do not need to stack and twist them on top of each other. So we then also do that for every other flake. And then we use a stamping technique to pick up a single layer by approaching a stamp to one of these uh, wafers with exfoliated flakes on top. And then we can simply pick up the single flakes and we can do that not only for one flake, but for multiple flakes one after another. And then at the end, when we melt the entire infrastructure down, um, we then have a sample looking like this. Here you can see in pink, outlined in pink, the bilayer graphene flake. We have the graphite contacts outlined in this uh, gray light blue um, that allow to electrically contact the bilayer graphene. And then we have the other graphite flakes and HBN flakes on top and below respectively. And also in this picture, you can see that we then use electron beam lithography and metal evaporation to um, yeah, write these gold contacts, which we can then connect later to um, our cryostat to perform the electrical transport measurements. And this already brings me to these transport measurements. So um, in this picture, um, this picture shows our usual, usual um, measuring configuration. So what we do is we apply and in a low AC current across the bilayer graphene, across the contacts, and then measure the voltage drop in between them. And this allows to calculate the resistance in the bilayer graphene or flowing through the bilayer graphene or the conductance G that I will use mostly in the following. And also we can apply top and bottom gate voltages to these graphite top and bottom gates and can thereby, first of all, create by electrostatic gating this electric displacement field and open up the band gap and further, we can completely independently tune the charge carrier density um, in the system that is somehow proportional to the Fermi energy level. 
And now I would like to show you a first measurement um, just to illustrate this. So um, here I'm showing you a measurement that is performed at the base temperature of our cryostat um, at 10 millikelvin, and when no electric displacement field is applied. And um, the charge carrier density here is plotted as a function of um, the conductance given in arbitrary units. And what we can see here is the conduct is that the conductance um, at whole doping or at electron doping peaks. And that's because in this regime, the Fermi energy level is tuned either into the valence or into the conduction band, and free states are available. While in the center, um, the Fermi energy level at zero charge carrier density sits right in between these two layers, and we thus um, so measure a dip in the conductance. And now the whole thing looks very similar when we apply finite electric displacement fields, but here we open up the gap. So around zero charge carrier density, we become really insulating and the conductance even drops down to zero because we are here, now the Fermi energy level sits right in the gap. And in the following, and what we've also seen before, I will mostly show these two dimensional plots where we basically tune the, um, in this case, the displacement field continuously. So here you can see again, the charge carrier density and displacement field. And at zero charge carrier density, we are in this insulating regime and become more and more insulating the larger um, displacement field we apply. So from here, um, everything looks normal. And we are in a regime now at small electric displacement fields um, where we don't see any effects of correlations. But now when we um, move to large electric displacement fields, everything changes actually. And I will first show you this for the whole dope regime. So for negative densities, and this corresponds now to the valence band. And this is now the same plot. So the conductance is shown as a function of charge carrier densities, only negative charge carrier densities, but for much larger electric displacement field. And you might notice that this plot now looks a bit different than the one I've shown you before. So again, we have the band gap here and the conductance increases with increasing charge carrier density. But now we have these regions of similar conductance. And we wanted to understand these regions and wanted to understand why we basically have these steps in the conductance. And we did that by applying in-plane and out-of-plane magnetic fields and tracing this magnetic field data then back to this data at zero magnetic field. And thereby we actually realized that only in this red regime, only at large charge carrier densities, we are spin and valley degenerate as some would expect it in bilayer graphene, as I showed you before. But when we move closer here, we actually um, move into the regime where um, correlations increase, where we sit close to the dip, uh, to the peak in the density of states. And in this regime, we then become spin polarized by very close to the band edge, we not only become spin polarized, but spin and valley polarized. And so we do have stoner fair magnetism here. We have a stoner half metal phase in the spin polarized phase. And then we have a um, stoner per metal phase very close to the band edge. And in fact, that's also consistent with the works by two other groups. Um, who obtained the same results with the same conclusion at around the same time. What we, however, found even more interesting, it's what's going on at very large electric displacement field. So you might see that there are some additional states or phases emerging here. And um, if I now draw another line cut at an electric displacement field of 0.6 volt per nanometers, we can see these dips and peaks in the conductance. And first, we tried to compare these peaks and dips that are really not there at low displacement fields or not expected in the single particle picture. We tried to compare them to theory. And what we realized is that likely every time we have a dip, we enter a regime where this annular Fermi surface pops up. So the first time for the fully polarized case, and then um, the density basically rescales when we are half polarized and then we have the second dip here. And um, these regions are of um, special interest because right where we have these, um, where this um, pocket here appears, we have the peak in the density of states. So um, in the regime here where we have these dips, we expect most um, electronic correlations to occur. And so we looked into these states in more detail. And uh, yeah, I will first now focus on this first uh, dip in the conductance um, corresponding to the fully polarized case. So in the next step, we then applied out of plane magnetic fields um, to this plot. And um, so this is again a 2D color plot density is tuned 
um, or conductance is now tuned as a function of density and the outer plane magnetic field. And we can see that this dip in the conductance, it persists and even persists when we apply these finite outer plane magnetic fields. We now can also go to different electric displacement fields, um, for example, here, and we can again see the state of decreased conductance. And um, that's again this dark blue regime. And what we can also see is that at some value, um, it disappears, and then everything is like um, expected in a single particle picture. And we see normal quantum whole states arising. Now, what you might also see from these plots is that actually the state of decreased conductance has a slope with respect to the magnetic field. And actually the slope in magnetic field that matches the slope of the second quantum whole state and also the conductance, if we look into it in real units, is very close to the conductance of 2e squared over h. So it seems like we do have a quantum anomalous whole state here with a finite churn number of two that even goes down to zero magnetic field. And indeed also our other um, experimental observations are consistent to that. So we measure an insulating temperature dependence in this phase. We see a strong current bias dependence and we see magnetic hysteresis all hinting towards a quantum anomalous whole phase. However, what is now not expected and what is different to previously seen quantum anomalous whole phases also in vanilla bilayer graphene is that this state emerges at finite charge carrier densities. So it seems to emerge in the middle of the band where we actually don't expect any gap to appear. And so one need to think of a reason now why we would have a gap phase here. And we can exclude mod insulators, for example, because they are not expected in this regime. Um, and what we think and what is most consistent with all of our data is that we have an electronic ordering here and likely the electrons rearrange themselves um, in a Wigner crystal phase here. And since we have this um, slope in the conductance, we would then not just have a trivial Wigner crystal phase, but we would have a topologically non-trivial Wigner Hall phase here. So um, yeah, we have this insulating state now that is consistent with this um, Wigner Hall crystal phase. And next to this, we actually also see um, a lot of other correlated phases consistent with correlated other correlated insulating phases, but also correlated methods. And actually, I will not go into more detail um, into these phases now, but I would like um, to instead move on to the electron doped side of um, bilayer graphene, where actually due to electron hole asymmetry, as I told you before, um, the bands look different. And so one might also expect a different phase diagram in this regime. So here's again the band structure of bilayer graphene at large electric displacement fields. And if I would now draw similar Fermi surfaces as before um, in a similar energy regime, one would see that we do not have it these strong changes in the Fermi surface topology. What's happening instead is that the band um, appears very quickly. So we almost have a flat energy band in this case, um, even though this fun of singularity still appears at very small energies, very close to the band edge. And since we now have this flat energy band with the nevertheless remaining fun of singularity, we have a peak in the density of state now not in the middle of the band anymore, as we saw previously, but we have this peak in the density of state right at the band edge. And so we also expect now correlated phases to appear at the band edge and not um, starting later in the middle of the band. And so now we did a similar analysis of the phase diagram as we did before on the Hodo bilayer graphene. So this is now again the conductance um, shown as a function of charge carrier density, this time positive charge carrier density corresponding to the conduction band and electric displacement field. And what we can see here is again, that we have this regions of similar conductance corresponding to steps in these line traces here. And we again perform measurements as a function of in-plane and out-of-plane magnetic field um, to analyze these phases. And we saw something that is quite similar. We again saw um, signs of spin and valley polarization. So um, we could relate or uh, yeah, conclude from these magnetic field measurements that close to the band edge, we are likely spin and valley polarized. Farther into the band, we are spin polarized and only at large densities, we are metallic. So interaction really seems to be only there um, at low uh, densities. So, so far, this looks very similar to the Hodo regime, but we do not have any competing 
um, insulating phases that emerge, that emerge here. However, we then did more measurements um, on this data, and I would like to just show you one um, more plot, which is um, this data set here, where we looked at the temperature dependence in the spin and valley polarized and spin polarized um, phases. And here we saw something surprising, or that surprised at least us, which is that, um, that the spin and valley polarized phase, as well as the spin polarized phase, actually becomes insulating at low temperatures. So the conductance, it decreases with decreasing temperature. And since we would expect stoner metals here, one does not expect this insulating temperature dependence. And um, we now call these phases SVI phase for spin and valley polarized insulating phase and SI phase for spin polarized insulating phase. And you might notice that here I added the word quasi and that's because we are not sure if we really have a defined insulator here. So if we would have a fully gapped um, phase or if we just maybe just have a partially um, phase gap where parts of the Fermi surface are gapped out. And that's because this temperature dependence is actually quite weak in these phases. So um, we again did more measurements, um, especially we saw indices again in, um, bi in bias dependent measurements um, and this all hints towards, again, an electronic ordering in these phases. And we think that here, the spin and valley ordered phases themselves, they transition into either charge density waves that gap out part of the Fermi surface or into fully gapped out Wigner crystal phases. So um, I will now conclude. Um, what I've shown you is that we see a whole set of different correlated phases in the very simple um, Bernal bilayer graphene. And um, due to electron hole symmetry and trigon warping, we have this complex band structure. At hole doping, we have these Fanhoff singularities um, that lead to peaks in the density of states at finite densities. And that's why we see these, um, first of all, these donor magnets here. And then we see these competing correlated phases at large electric displacement fields. And then at hole doping, we also see spin and valley ordering. Um, but there we see that the spin and valley ordered phase themselves transition into insulating phases at low temperatures um, that are consistent um, with charge density waves of Wigner crystals. So we really see a whole cascade um, of new phases here. And before I now end my talk, um, I would like to acknowledge, um, first of all, Thomas Weitz and our entire group in Göttingen. And um, we worked a lot um, with collaborations here. So we did the work on Hodo bilayer graphene with Fan Chang and his group, and we did the work on electron dope bilayer graphene with Jiu Dong and Leonid Levitov, and we obtained the HPN from Japan. So um, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer questions now. <laughs>